at this time go to our our, our uh, live TV feed, which is on uh, uh, which is on uh, uh, live stream. You go to new.livestream.com forward slash Alex Bennett, and you can see the show tonight as well as feel it on your radio or whatever. Phil Meyer is there. Uh, Max is there. Oh, boy. Which is on uh, uh, live stream. Oh, you go to new. Oh, I see. Let me do something Forward here. slash Alex oh. Bennett. And okay, you can hold see on the show I have tonight to as well this. as I feel it. Kill, on, I had to kill the sound on that. Okay. And uh, here's Tony. Hi, Tony. Hello. Good evening. And uh, Rob Alfano is there. And uh, Max is all the way from uh, uh, Germany. Don't I wouldn't do that kind of salute. Uh <laughs> As a Jew, yeah. it kind of scares me a little bit. So you know, uh, that's a see, different so, kind of way. So but. this week we've had let's see, somebody call from Shanghai, which is my wife. We had somebody call from uh, Czechoslovakia, that was David, and now you from Germany. I love this this worldwide web thing. It's going to catch on. Uh, Mark Thorner is there. Hi, Mark. How are you this evening? Uh, awake. Awake? Good. Well, why don't you do the rest of the show then, and I can go in the other <laughs> I didn't room say I was fully awake. I just said awake. I announced to my wife tonight that I'm going to sleep in the guest room tonight because I, 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 there's this crevice starting, starting on my side of the bed, and it's very uncomfortable. Uh, Take her side. Huh? Take her side. Yes. Kick her to the curb. <laughs> Turn yeah, the bed around. Right. Just, just, yeah. just flip it, uh, you know, 300, uh, 180 degrees. Oh, hey, Rob, did you hear my suggestion? I did. Yeah. I thought of it. The problem is I've got so much going on that uh, scoring is very difficult. So what I typically, the way I score is I just put one, two, three, four, cross for five. If I have to start thinking about removing points, it's just another thing to add. It's a very busy hour. <laughs> I, I would, you know, it's a great idea. I've considered it. But because it's, you it's, have noticed that some people just go, come up and give any answer. Yeah. Just to give an we, answer, and that would yeah. prevent that from happening. Yeah, but it, then it becomes an issue of how am I going to keep score of all that? As it is, I'm you know I wind up I read the same question twice once in a while because I don't I forget to advance the questions are all on different web pages and I have to advance them forward and it, you know there's yeah. so much going on uh, you know that it's just one man band there's you know yeah. just, it's a lot of a lot of overhead. Oh, okay, but I mean, I just—it it was the one thing I guess annoyed me about the game, and it, it that not everybody was doing that, but we know somebody who did that all the and, time. And the, and the true or false thing, but but Charlie was the the clear the clear. I mean, I mean the solar system stuff there. The whole. Yeah, that was, I, mean, that was I think he kind of laid back after a while, just said, "You know what? I'm so far ahead of the game here. I'm just going to stop answering." <laughs> well, you know, come He's on. He's not saying no. <laughs> yeah. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, uh, Max, you were showing your cat. It's not really my cat. It's my flatmate's cat, and the cat's kind of crazy. <laughs> How's it crazy? It likes to jump around and type things when I'm not around. And what? Type things on a computer. Oh, really? Remember that little beep beep oh. earlier? And then you see, really what you do is you set up a camera, and when he does that, you then put it on YouTube, and get yourself 10 million hits, and make like two hundred thousand dollars, or take a holiday to Palermo and go to the beach. Yeah, or something like that. You know, with the money. <laughs> but the question was for Rob: uh, What's the game? Is it like a trivia pursuit yeah, kind of thing? Yeah, game. it's general knowledge trivia. There's like we had like nine different categories and. You know, it's it's basically just, you know, you pick a category. The one who gets the correct answer picks a category. And then we answer the question. First person to say their name gets to give the answer. What we could do is we could say nobody gets to say their name until after I'm done speaking, which would maybe make it so people just don't jump in like that. I, yeah. But uh, I think on uh, Jeopardy, I would love to do that. I would love to do the take a point away if somebody gets it wrong. Uh, I just haven't figured out quite how to. How did? Because when I, if I showed you my scoreboard here, yeah. look at this. I don't know if you'll see it's it. It's a or very not. technical thing. It's a piece of paper. Yeah, yeah. It's. Can you see that? It's just a. 
kind yeah, of. Yeah, you'll see the slash marks. Yeah. It's just slash marks. Yeah. And if I have to start crossing them out as it is, it's difficult with, you know, with everything going on during the show. What you should get, how about an abacus? <laughs> <laughs> I have two computers going because uh, what I do is I light up my, you know, this is Jim's idea. You know, because people were saying to me, what are the categories again? What are the categories again? So I took my Mac, my MacBook, and I used presentation and I created a list of all the categories. Then I logged this in. This is getting to, get to look very much like Jeopardy. And then, well, just, just the categories, not the, you know, not the questions, but just the categories. Yeah. And then I, I log in to um, GabNet Live as my personal account and I share out my screen so you can see that. So I'm logged in with two accounts, and uh, so people can see the categories while they're playing. Oh, and, I uh, see. I see. Okay. Hey, Rob. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't they make uh, like bingo supplies where you can have these ten uh, things that flip with numbers? Uh, you know, maybe one through ten. So you could, uh, you know, uh, each person has a position, and uh, you just flip the uh, flip the number. And if they get it wrong, then you move it down. Uh, and if they may get it right, you move it up. Yeah, it's like probably I've seen them in bingo halls. Oh, I know, know because at your age, you, you probably go to bingo every Friday. Well, no, I, I, yeah, of course. Uh, but uh, it's, it's like a bar. And then it's got uh, uh, 10, yeah. 10 numbers or, 20, or uh, two, two sets of 10 numbers. And you just flip them. Max. Is there a penalty for calling out someone's, someone else's name to uh, confuse them? No one's ever like, told me that. Like Mr. Wallace, right? Oh, well, I'll call out Wallace, Mr. Wallace's name just so you you would correct your answer question towards him. And it now got to, he, it no. got to the point where Charlie was saying, you take this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, wait a, minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you have any questions left over? Um, not a lot because we went through a good number of the questions tonight. We went through a lot, nine categories, at least 10 categories or at least 10 questions per category. And it was a full hour tonight. So not, not a heck of a lot of stuff left from that. Just let me try one or two. All right. Give me a second to call up, uh, last, uh, okay. So let's see what we had left. We closed out the music, the eighties Seinfeld trivia. I think we had a couple left. Okay. Okay. So well, let's see where we left off with Seinfeld trivia. That's uh, a soup okay. Nazi. <laughs> uh, yeah, for the guy in Germany, just get the answer with soup Nazi yeah. in Berlin. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, <laughs> Jerry meets, uh, uh, now we did that one. So, mm hmm. Okay, we did that one. Here we go. Uh, Alex probably doesn't know if he didn't listen to the all the show. Yeah, you can give me any of them, and I probably, you know. I, That's uh, true. You're only going to be there. Um, who urinated on Jerry's new couch? Oh, that was the barber. That was Poppy. Uh, Poppy. George. That's correct. Poppy. Poppy. Uh, Poppy. Um, oh, Poppy Slot. Uh, who takes Frank Costanza's TV guide? Uh, the, uh, the guy made the, uh, uh, what, the, the, the weather guy, uh, Al Roker. No, 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 wait. No, no, no. Mailman? No, 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 no. no. Frank Costanza. Frank. Who took Frank the Costanza's TV guy? Yeah, he made it into like a like a, 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 a the guy who did it made it into a tree. Made it into a paper no, I tree. I think it was a mistake. It was Elaine. Elaine took it, remember? Oh, took it. And then he was flipping out, "Who took my TV guy?" You know, uh, um how long did Jerry go without vomiting in the sitcom? Remember the episode where he's eating the black and white cookie? I don't remember that. I mean, I, he had a vomit contest? No, no, no. What happened was they were going to someone's house and they had to stop for cake. And they went at, They went to this bakery. Yeah, the, for they the chocolate, bo the chocolate the bakery, babka. They, they, they Right, the babka. And they were going with a lesser babka. Yeah. But <laughs> they had, he ate what? the black and white cookie. Look to the cookie, Elaine. Look, the black and white, they get along so well. Yeah, it's, the uh, yeah right. There's and your... then he gets so, sick. So does this mean Alex has two wrong, one right? Well, this is a hard one. Uh, right. I, I couldn't have answered this. I know all that stuff, right? But how many years did he remember? He, he vomited when he ate the cookie. He got sick and he was so upset because he broke his record. He was going to lose his record for having not vomited in X amount of years. The answer is 13 years. Oh. And the last one here on the TV show Seinfeld, what did the New York police officer 
What did the New York police officer call Newman due to the fact that Newman had been illegally parked for years? Oh, boy. Well, that's hard. That's a rough that's, that's one we didn't get to ask tonight. Who's making all that noise? It's my... It, one oh. moment, please. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, boy, I, what did he call Newman? Fat pig? Well, could, well you know, the obvious. Right. Um, he called him white whale. Oh, really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. What were one they, of the three. Do you remember this one? What was the name of the horse that Kramer used to pull oh, the handsome oh, cat? Oh, 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 yeah, when he farts, he says his name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. You're going to say it, and I'm just going to, like, feel terrible. I couldn't remember it. Uh, because he kept feeding him. Uh, uh, remember, he had gone to Costco. He'd gone to Costco and he got uh, uh, what was what was it named uh, beefaroni beef or something? No, or? Uh, it wasn't beefarino. Beef, beefarino, and beefarino. the reason it was called beefarino is they wanted to call it beefaroni, right? But there yeah. is a beefaroni, and so uh, uh, they they weren't going to do it because they they went to the um, beefarino or beef. Beefaroni company and say, can we use the name? And they said no, so that's why it became Beefarino. Wow, that, I, I would uh, but he was feeding him Beefarino, and and as they're going along, it, it, it ends with a Y. My yes, right? I'm seeing that. Yes. Um, 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 oh boy, <laughs> and then he farts, and uh, he's taking uh, George's uh, uh, father and mother-in-law for a ride <laughs> in the carriage. And they're all of a sudden starting to gag. Yep. Um, hmm. At the smell car. Yeah. I I okay. I give up. What was the name of the Rusty. Name? Rusty. 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 Oh my. Is that uh, one the four? Huh? One uh, four wrong, one right. Remember the. Uh, oh well, you know you've been right. You've been wrong eighty times this week. I'm, so I'm wrong hundred percent of the time. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. And don't but forget. One more. See if you know this one. Remember the episode where uh, Jerry had to give away his two Super Bowl tickets to attend somebody's wedding? Do you remember whose wedding? What was it? The was it the was it was the mid was it the midget? You're you're right. Like I think you're. It's not the midget. It's, it's a it's a, one of the characters that they you know. Huh. Uh. The Drake. Oh, I, I, I know! I know the Drake. Yeah. Oh, you know the Drake? Yeah, I know the Drake. He's been on this show a couple of times. Everybody loves the Drake. Everybody loves the Drake, right, Mark? <laughs> That's right. And some of us have followed the Drake for years. Exactly. What's his name? Rick. Rick, o Rick, Rick Overton. Rick Overton. Oh, Rick is the Drake. Yep. Yes. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Um, everybody loves the Drake. Everybody loves the drink. We've been joined by uh, Rebel Stoke Jim Browning. Hello, Rebel Stoke. Hi. Hey, Mr. Stoke, can I call you hey, Mr. I, Stoke? I, yeah, I asked around. Yeah. And Tuber's looking for a roommate, so if you can get up here before he lets the room go, you can stay with him. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, that means I have to climb that hill every day? Uh, he'll give you a lift. Oh, Red, we're using his what? Snowmobile? Winter's got to be better. Well, in the summer, in the summer, he piggybacks. <laughs> he piggybacks. <laughs> oh, man. And if there's a sock on the doorknob, you got to go sit in the woodshed till he's done. <laughs> he's 115 years old. I could be in the woodshed for a year. <laughs> All I'm saying. Yeah. I'm Where, just saying. Where's Patrick tonight? I'm asking you because he tells you everything. Well, let's see. Let me check my watch. Um, oh, after last night's conversation, he's probably halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering where, where he is tonight. And you know what we haven't heard from tonight? Yeah, don't say it. Don't say it. Yeah. 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 No, no. Uh, oh, uh, no, there's, it's Dan Meyer. Oh, thank God. Th hello, Dan. Thanks. 
glad, glad it's you and not yeah. not somebody else. Um, oh, yeah. Well, so Tony, I, Tony, no, please, Tony, and I mean this in all due respect. You never say goodbye. I know. I, you know what it is? I'm going to tell you why I don't. <laughs> okay. and it's not because I'm being rude. Yeah. I think when you're all talking, I don't want to interrupt. So I just drop off then. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. very nice of you. But you can still say goodbye. We don't mind. I, I, don't, I do I that. Like you're all talking about something. I don't want to yeah. be like cut into it and say, oh, I'm going to sleep. Yeah. I, so I, I, I do that. Have to drop off. By the way, do, Patrick, I if he wants to get. Oh. What, what, wait, hold on a second. Patrick, if he wants to call, better do it now. Yeah, because I, then we'll be full right. up. Yeah, I was just gonna say I do that sometimes when I'm on Miranda's show because it's late. When it gets about one o'clock and she's still going, you know, I don't. I'm not gonna jump in and say bye. I'm leaving. Think, sometimes I'll. Sometimes I'll wave though. That might be a thing to I, do. I think it'd be cool if I just hung up on all of you sometimes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that option. You know, we're we'll hanging up on you. But it's not well, in person. No, I'm wedged in here. I'm really wedged in here. I have to do two hours because Rebel Stoke Jim comes on after me or Miranda. Now, they can go as little or as much as they want to because they have nobody on the other side. Um, uh, 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 Rob, if he wanted to, I guess could go on late, you know. But I'm wedged in here, you know, and so I have to do this. But, you know, like Miranda oh, only did an hour last night so she could go see a movie which is getting such bad reviews, I can't believe it. Which one? Uh, what, Tusk, this Tusk. film that was done by uh, I heard it was Kevin pretty Smith. Good with, no, the, yeah. the reviews I've read are horrible. Oh, to know. The, yeah. oh she'll love good. it. She'll, well, yeah. uh, maybe that's why we're not seeing her tonight because she's so embarrassed, maybe. That's no, 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 no. No. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She'll talk about it. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, though, Alex. Again, hang on. I don't have my general manager's tie. But oh, did um, I do something wrong? No, but I'm just. Oh, gonna okay. That. Uh, officially, after after you're 75, you can reduce your show time. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that? Is that in the bylaws of the uh, yeah. American Broadcast Network? That's right. That's right. You can opt out page, and change page 42, paragraph 3. <laughs> yeah. It's not mandatory. It's all volunteer. Well, I, you know, being the socialist that I am, and you know that I'm a socialist, right, uh, 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 Phil? Phil? I think you're an anarchist, but... Uh... <laughs> well, I'm a socio-anarchist. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Sociopath. That uh, that I really run want to run this company, and and you know Google once their slogan was do no harm, and, and now they do nothing but yeah. harm, yeah. you know, and I don't want to get to that you know, point. So I want to just say right now that everybody in my company can retire at fifty well, with a full pension. Oh God. Great. I can stay home and read my books. Wow. And watch TV. Wow. Yeah, 50 with a full that means, pension. That, wow. that works for Amanda. It only works for Amanda. Well, yeah, right. It only works for Amanda. <laughs> She's the only one on yeah. the network that's under the age of 50. The rest of us are like the Walmart greeters of Gabnet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to get one of those jobs. I think I'm going to have to. Hi, welcome to GabNet. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, welcome, teeth. welcome to GabNet. I love you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Welcome to GabNet. I love you. That was from Idiocracy. That was a little. Oh, well, we fun. should start. We should start getting more shows on GabNet. I think. I just don't know where to find anybody who wants to do it. Well, I'm not. Li- what? No, go ahead, Dan. Oh, I was just going to say, um, man, I, I would love to do some if, if I had equipment, but I all I have is this right now. But He's uh, talking about a radio show, folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, I, all, this, all I have is this little thing right here now. It's not well, zip making it up, powerful will you? enough to do a show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, radio, I just love doing it and... You know, um, when I was doing college radio, I'll have to send you some of my uh, old tapes maybe for audition 
reasons at some what, point. What, what, what about the Tony and Coco Hour? The what? The Tony and Coco Hour. Before Tony she gets Coco. fixed and after. I think she made a move on me tonight the other night, Alex, because I was trying to take her down the stairs, and oh, she went goodness. like in a jumping motion. <laughs> I was like, back off. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What, what do you nah, she's just getting excited because she's going down the steps. She asked you to pay for a room. Right? No, I go right, take it right to the crate. I put like Purina one down, and she goes right in like Flint. Really? Yeah, because yeah, I got a. I, she's pretty much trained pretty good now. Yeah, yeah. And, We're never gonna stop. No, We're never gonna stop here. We're never gonna stop hearing about this dog. Oh See, yeah. We, we could have that for an hour. Yep. Well, oh, you know something? You okay, Tony? You got a show. I got a lot. You know, I never stop talking. Show. Sure. Hey, uh, Ma Max has his hand raised. Maybe he wants to do a show from Germany. I was just thinking maybe a funny travel show. A funny travel show? Yeah, you tell jokes from around the world. Oh, really? Can you give us an example? I want to tell the Germans when I tell us one, but okay. <laughs> no, let me see. Let me, it has to be spontaneous. Is there a, but... Do you know a German joke? Yes. Okay, well, come on. Let's hear the German joke. You, you might be insulted by this one. Uh, oh, it's do it German. Well, it's also German, too. Well, he's Jewish, so obviously a German joke is going to be problematic. Yes. Yeah. How many well, Jews does it take to screw in a light bulb? Humor, he can take it. Okay. None so, because they're the lampshade? What? If what, I get what cut off, now you guys know why, just so you know. He doesn't oh, even hang up on Doug. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Oh, Oh God! You said his, you said his name, Phil. Oh God, that's my fault. Oh, um, the yeah. joke. Oh, the by the way, is... if Patrick tries to call tonight, Doug. Yeah, you can yeah. cut me off. Okay. Yeah, you'll be the first one to go. Okay, I'm warning you. Now. I, was just, I was just calling to you know wish Charles you know congratulations for the trivia game there, and yeah, I noticed like on Halloween is is on a Friday. Somebody and, kill yeah, you're me. gonna be on the air on Friday. I was just, I was gonna suggest that you know that graveyard I took a picture of. Anybody like, have a gun I can put in my be mouth happy right to now? Do like a you know a, a live Skype from that damn graveyard during Halloween time, all. and hopefully for y'all, I'll get killed by ghosts Two, or something. So. Three. That's negative. Yeah. We can we can break out a Ouija board on Halloween. Oh, Patrick! What is was it? What was it? What, what, wait a minute! Hold on a second. What nice thing were you saying? What nice? No, no, no. Oh, what, a joke. No, he's no, in German. You can't. See, you know, it was yeah. such a nice conversation a minute ago. Uh, Doug's go gotta go. <laughs> Doug's on the chopping block. Yeah. Uh, what was you saying about he Doug? He didn't do the, anything wrong tonight. I was a hundred percent wrong all week. You want me to get off? Wait, no, you were hundred nah, percent wrong nah, nah, in your so opinions it, uh, <laughs> and in your in your information. Well, my opinions are right. My my information was wrong. Well, no. You're, oh, your opinions are always right. Yeah, very there's, right. There's no question about that. Uh, yes, Max. Here's the joke. Okay. Okay. Here comes here comes the the a, a, a joke he picked you you picked this up no, in I Germany. No, I just thought of one just now in my head. I just thought of Miranda just now in that movie Tusk. So something similar. Yeah. Have you seen that movie called Constipation? Has it come out yet? Mm. Oh. 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 Did you hear about the constipated mathematician? <laughs> no. <laughs> they say he worked it out with a pencil. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Okay. You know what? I, I uh, basically I can't tell jokes like that cuz I've never collected jokes like that. It's like an old joke this guy goes to a doctor. No, uh, I don't want to hear your at, joke. At, <laughs> I don't want to hear your joke. Just let me finish out. As soon as I say something, you interrupt. I don't want to hear your joke. Anyway, I don't want to hear your joke. Watch, I'll keep this going. This guy goes to I don't want to hear your joke. Oh, come on. It's uh, funnier than your jam joke there. I didn't tell a joke. Well, you kind of referenced it. No, uh, I didn't. Anyway, a guy we don't want to wanna hear your joke. <laughs> okay, I won't tell a joke. Good. Even though it's funny as hell. It's fine. Anyway, anybody else have a joke? I heard a couple of real bad jokes. Because the today, thing I always I love about it, one already. thing we always said, uh, uh, Albert and I, when we were doing the radio show, is. Never take well, listener know. jokes. Because when a listener calls you up and says, I got a great joke, 
either there it's it's you can't put it on the air or even worse their timing is so bad they tell it badly this joke came from national lampoon i don't want to hear your joke doug <laughs> here i got a really bad joke you want to hear just a real we don't want to hear it dan because I, he's not here i want joke. no i want to hear everybody else's joke but yours yes okay. dan your joke okay um why did the chicken cross the playground the kid around <laughs> no to get to the other slide I told you it was now bad. that's not bad actually oh, that's not bad listen, oh, my, okay. jokes, my jokes a lot better than that one okay, yeah then I, I assume, uh, it maybe it is but we don't want to hear it uh, uh, yes Charlie Wallace I got one yeah you can kiss a nun once you can kiss a nun twice but don't get into the habit <laughs> <laughs> you know these aren't that bad are they all right. anyway, this, this I don't want to hear your joke, Doug. This, this guy Doug, I don't want to hear doctor. your joke. I'm going to talk over you while you're trying to tell the joke because I don't want to hear a it. joke. Yes, Max, do you have another joke? What do you call a chicken crossing the road? Poetry in motion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken. Can't you chicken? Know. Can I tell my joke now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 the only, you know, there are no funny age jokes, but I found one once. Are you ready? I mean, it, 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 you can't make fun of a disease that's disgusting. But here, I heard this one and I said, I can't see in any way that that's a bad taste joke. What's the worst thing about getting AIDS? Yeah. Having to tell your family, you're, having to tell your family you're Haitian. Oh yeah. You <laughs> Guy walks into a bar. Yeah. Uh, he sees this uh, table sitting there, yeah. and they're making little hand motions. They're going like this and like this. This yes. is for the live feed. Yeah. So he looks up at the bartender. He says, "What's what's that?" And he says, "Well, those people are deaf." He says, "This means a shot, and this means a beer." Okay. All right. A couple an hour or so later, he looks up again at the bartender, and he sees. They're going like this. So the bartender looks up and says, Ah, oh, they're singing. We're never going to get out of here. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, now this joke I is don't want to hear your joke. No, come on. We don't want to hear your joke, I'm Doug. Doug, Doug, we don't want to hear let, your let me, joke. Let me tell we my don't, joke and I'll we put don't, it We don't want to hear your joke. If all this show is for now is me over and over again saying we don't want to hear your joke, then so be it. We don't want to hear hear like your joke. Phil and wait a minute. Dan and oh, wait a minute. Phil, you want to hear his joke? No, I was going to yeah, tell another it'll, joke. Maybe he'll, he said he put himself on mute for 10 minutes. That's a joke. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 Charlie, you don't want to hear his let, joke, do you? Let me tell his joke. It's like yeah. National Lampoon Magazine. Nobody here says... Uh, oh, he, he stole it? He stole it? He stole material. it from copyrighted yeah, material. Yeah. I see. You're going to yeah. get me in trouble no, now. Yeah. yeah. Their own jokes by themselves. Yeah, you what? Mean, anyway, I, 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 hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Jim? Yeah, I have one. Oh, okay. Uh, it's told a uh, fair bit. It's, um, um, I just took my first Canadian history exam. I got an A. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That's good. That's okay. funny, Doug. Uh, my, my, my joke is funny. If you look, give me give me ten seconds. Like what? Mike Heinen is trying to call right now, and I just had to hang up on him. So, so a yeah. little bit later, though, somebody will drop off eventually. That, and, let, let, but, me and, and, wait, wait, let me tell wait, my wait, joke. I don't want to hear your joke. Let me tell my joke. Don't you, you understand how many uh, times do I have man, to that, say that, that, I don't I don't want to hear your them. joke. Let me tell my joke and you can hang up on me. I don't want I can hang up on you before listening to the joke. Oh come on. Too I, much stuck. No means no. No means no. Yeah. Yeah. God, I feel like I'm being raped joke. here. It's a you horrible know? joke you told. What? Oh you're not you're not gonna be insulting the Canadian Doug. You're not gonna be Assaulting Canadians and everybody else, and, and and Mr. Dan there, and all that. Yeah, this but you're going to tell us a joke from the national uh, from the National Lampoon, and the fact is that's copyrighted material, and yeah. we can't have you do it. Oh, yeah, yeah it could get Alex. It could get me in a me. lot of trouble. It could cost yeah. me the whole network. Cost him millions. I ain't going to get Alex in trouble. I'm going to get myself in trouble. For no, no, you, no, you're not going to get yourself it, in trouble. I get in trouble. Yeah. The network gets in trouble right. if Alex, you use a National Alex Lampoon is, joke. Is, 
Alex's name is on the network. Yeah. You're just a, we're just callers. Right. You know. Tony, you, you have, have a here's the subpoena you, right here. You have a joke, yeah. Tony? <laughs> Does Tony Tony's have a joke? Subpoena. Hold on a second, everybody. Tony? I have a joke? Yeah. My mother drives me crazy. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you gotta laugh, but I gotta find her cream for her for her. She puts it on herself a little bit. This is this is my life, Alex. I kid you not. <laughs> I gotta go to Amazon tomorrow. Other than to that, put no, cream on her face. Comes in my mind. Yeah. Right um, I have, oh here I have a joke. Ready? Go ahead. Two Jews walk into a bar, <laughs> and they buy it. <laughs> oh, you! I didn't say that. I like that. <laughs> I have an old joke if you want to hear it. An old joke? Here, here. Yeah, here, here, come, here comes ago. Rob with an old joke. This couple that got married and they saved themselves for their wedding night. They have not even seen each other with, with you know, they've just been celibate and all that. Yeah. So here it is. They get married, the whole ceremony and everything. It's the wedding night, and they're all ready for the honeymoon to consummate the marriage, and they're so excited. They're in the bedroom, and, and the man is starting to take off his clothes, and he, he takes off his pants, and, and his knees, they're all just, they're, they're mangled looking. And, and, he, and she says, honey, what's wrong with your knees? He goes, oh, when I was a kid, I had this disease called the measles. It's horrible. It just, it, it really messed up my knees. And then uh, so she just shrugged her shoulders and said, okay. You know, and then he goes and he takes off his socks and his toes were just all mangled looking. And she's like, worse. She's like, oh my God, honey, what happened? He goes, I had a rough childhood when I was a kid. I had tolio, horrible. Tolio. I mean, and it's painful. Yeah. So, you know, now he's standing there in his skivvies. He finally takes his underwear down, and his bride says, "Don't tell me when you were a kid you had small cocks." <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. No, you don't get a turn. We don't want to hear your joke. Come on, you're telling yourself. Come on, somebody joke. quickly. Do you have a joke? Anybody else have a joke? Let me, let me Quick. Get my, I, I, so no, I'll, I don't want to hear I'll, your I'll, joke I'll, because your joke is a violation of copyright law. Yeah. Anybody else? Hey, hey, it's very, law. it's very it's serious, it's, Doug. It's, it's very <laughs> serious. Nobody's joking here about that. Yeah. At Man, all. Fuck you. Anyway, let me tell my. No, joke. we don't want to hear your joke. All right, here's my joke. My wife's so fat. How fat, How is, fat she? is she? So fat that the doctor said if she doesn't lose weight, she's going to die soon. Yeah. Diabetes. That, that's, my, that's my room killer joke. That's the that, anti-joke. That's, that's a horrible joke. Anyway, my joke is this guy. I don't want to hear your my, joke. We, hey, don't you get the idea, doctor, Doug? We don't want to hear you. Doctor. Nobody can hear you telling your joke now right now because I'm talking while well, you're telling well, your joke. Well, Everybody well, talk well, at the same well, time well, so that he can't tell his joke. Oh God! <laughs> You're right with the rest. We still haven't heard a word you said, oh, and it, I hope he's pen. feeling very good about the fact that he thinks he's telling you. Everybody, keep talking over him. Uh, okay, nobody heard the joke, Doug. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you, you don't appreciate good humor, but anyway, that's fine. Oh, I don't appreciate no, I heard good something humor. Something about an absent-minded doctor and a. Uh, Something. Uh, anyway. I like good humor as much as I like Carvel. Just, just let me tell my joke. <laughs> just let me tell my oh, joke. I got another one for you. Oh, wait a minute. You already told your joke, Doug. You, you just nah, told you your joke. You just you just told your joke. You. You said, let me tell be my joke. Well, said, I let you tell your joke. joke. I didn't say we weren't going to talk over it. Everybody was talking over me, including you, Mr. Dan. Well, Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Doug. 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 Did you or did you not get to tell your joke? Why not? You just you just told your joke, didn't you? Well, I was being talked over, and you just well, that, that I, we didn't say well, that we weren't going to talk no. over like you. Seinfeld episode. This is like that. Hold it. This is like that Seinfeld episode. That's the question. The, the How, Seinfeld episode just, where the guy gave him uh, Jerry a suit, and the deal was he had to have dinner with him, two right. dinners. Mendy's got and, the best pea soup. <laughs> yeah, and he says pea soup is not dinner. <laughs> so, Mendy's so Jerry, the best, the best Jerry, yeah. the best. <laughs> you know, it's very, it's very funny. It's very well, funny. But me, will you shut? Will you shut up a I'll second, up Doug? You. Doug, let me. I'll hang up on you after. No, I tell I'll my hang joke. up on you, Doug. Bye. See ya. Oh. 
There we go. Uh, that'll let, that'll uh, let uh, Mike Heinen call if uh, we now have an Patrick opening. Uh, or too. Patrick to call. We have an opening now. Um, I've got one more. I see. I, I get worried when I don't hear from Patrick because Patrick usually will write me and say I can't call in tonight. He he wrote me to ask if there was an open spot. Yeah, there is an open spot yeah. now, Patrick. Yeah, I'm gonna have Facebook him here. Yeah, uh, but anyway, what were you gonna say? You have a joke, uh, Jim? I have one last Canadian joke for you, and it's uh, it's been around a long time, and it, and it's fairly topical. What with everything that happened in the UK last night, and and you could rewrite it, but it was. Um, uh, uh, did you hear about the guy who had the map of Canada tattooed on his ass? No. Every time he sat down, Quebec separated. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would come up with Canadian jokes. Yeah. Oh, oh wait a minute. Well, oh, it's Patrick. It's Patrick calling. Hello, Patrick. Hey, pa oh, Patrick. We were afraid it's you Pat fell in. Um, this has been the most miserable hour for me to listen to. Um, it's been absolutely atrocious, Alex. I mean, the jokes, I snickered at Jim's joke, and that's about it. I see. Um, well, you I couldn't almost, see mine. I almost didn't call. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it literally had me sitting here, and I, I messaged Mark and, and Jim going, what the fuck? What, what is this well, show about? Well, make, with, about make jokes. a joke. If, if you got a better joke, tell it, Patrick. I don't have jokes, and I don't like jokes at all. I like, you, I, I like it on serious when you guys didn't allow it. Well, it, you know, uh, it was a, our way kind of shutting Doug up. Right. Yeah. Now he's gone. Now move on. Do you hear anybody telling jokes now? See? Now, you're okay. just an old Crickets, curmudgeon. Yeah. You don't want to laugh at a good joke. Do you have a joke? No, he does. He Patrick doesn't like jokes. He's all serious all the time. No, I I just uh, I think it was partially XM. The the joke that Not I like, I wouldn't tell anyway, and and I wouldn't. I, I'm not a comedian, so I don't pretend to. Actually, so. you're one of the funniest people I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Yeah, yeah but that, if, if that's the case, it's just based on my reaction to things. I'm not intentionally trying to be funny. So, But, but you are funny, and you know you're being funny. <laughs> I'm not making jokes. Oh, okay. It, it, I, man, I, I would just... I was sitting here for a half hour, and I'm going, wow, and... and I mean, the best part was Doug uh, getting talked over for the whole time. <laughs> that actually made me laugh because hearing him not being able to tell a joke was great. So. Yeah. Well, most people uh, don't tell jokes well. And I can't say that I even do. I usually don't tell jokes. Uh, and, and there's a thing with me, and I don't know what it is. But if I'm told a joke, let's say I hear a very funny joke, I can't remember it the next day. Uh, I, 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 it, yeah, I mean, if you ask me right now, tell me a good joke. I've heard thousands of good jokes in my lifetime, but I'll be damned if I can if I can recall one of them. You know. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I heard two jokes today at work. I I told you one of them, but I forgot the other one. Yeah. I think the other one was better. It's kind of like dreams. You don't remember dreams after you have them. You wake yeah. up, you remember them at that moment, and then within an hour you've forgotten the dream. Uh, they say if you want to remember a dream, the best way to do it is to just talk it out loud when you wake up, and then you'll remember it. But that's fine. Uh, Okay, well, thank you. It's been nice to be here this evening. Hi, everybody. I've, I've run out of material. Um, no, I was going to ask you, Alex. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you had any thoughts about um, um, a Clear Channel trying to make themselves kind of hip with this new iHeartMedia name that they've rebranded yeah. themselves with. Well, in that I've had some dealings with iHeart, uh, regarding yeah. this program, which did not come to fruition, but the talks are not, as you know, completely closed yet. 
Um, right. Uh, it, 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 I I think that they're making okay. They're making a big mistake in in calling the company iHeart Media. Uh, iHeart has been successful to, to, for them, but only because they're giving it away for free. And it's just to get people basically to listen to clear channel stations. And, and so to take the whole country and give it that, um, the whole co company and give it that umbrella, what happens when this fad goes away? Okay. What are they going to call it then? Television? You know. <laughs> they're they're going to come up with something else. You know, and, and never in the news. business of radio. They they told us that when I worked for Clear Channel, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. actually said we're our primary business is not radio; it's selling ads. So, you know, well, that was yeah, honest, that's but what but, any radio station but, is. But I don't see that. That's not true. That's not true. I don't see that iHeartRadio I mean, makes the money. It, 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 well, when you say something like that, when you say my my primary business is is selling ads. What you're doing is you're 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 giving up the radio. You're giving up the, the the putting any fire behind what you do just to sell ads. You know, and, and, and that was the impression us employees got. Well, certainly, um, uh, it would be a good impression for you to have. Uh, the the business of radio has always been advertising. Oh yes, but uh, they were really upfront about it. Huh. They were extremely upfront about it to say it. I mean, you talk about programming. They didn't care about programming. They cared about how can we get more ads in there. Well, they do. They do about seven minutes worth of commercials every commercial break. And uh, I, for one, when I was doing a show over WOR and I went into a seven-minute break, uh, Albert was my producer on that particular occasion. I walked into him and I said, "Do I have enough time to go home, have a sandwich, and come back downtown?" <laughs> <laughs> because that's how long the breaks were. And then I said to myself, how do they expect anybody to listen to this for any amount of time? Mm -hmm. I mean, what, they're going to stick around through seven minutes worth of commercials to hear me talk for five so that I can go back to seven minutes more worth of commercials? They actually tried an experiment my last year with Clear Channel, which I think was yeah. 2004 maybe, mm -hmm. 2005, um, where they, they decided to cut back no more 60 second spots only 30 second spots yeah and they were going to charge a premium for those 30 second spots because there were fewer commercials and they tried that and it didn't last very long damn well maybe they didn't have something important enough to sell you know if you had a show that somebody wanted to listen to you know and 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 it was a must listen kind of thing uh, I think you could run just a handful of commercials and charge a shitload of money for it. And most advertisers would appreciate that because, they, you know, you don't want to be in a cluster of 14. Right. You know, in seven minutes, you can run 14 30-second spots. Mm -hmm. Okay? Do you want to be an advertiser in the middle of those 14 yeah. spots? If you're not the first one or so the last one. So if you one, said, screw. we're only going to run three commercial breaks an hour and they're only going to be two minutes each, do you want to buy one of those slots? They I don't even think the last one helps you because who knows when it's the last one and who's going to wait around? Yeah, you're gone. It's That's the first right. one. It's the first yeah. one. But the point is that if you only did two minutes, people would stick around. Yes. You know, and they'd listen through those commercials. And I, I think, think advertisers, yeah, yeah. if you told them, look, we're going to charge you more for the spots, but your impact is going to be stronger than it's going to be if we if we have to do this seven minutes worth of commercials thing. No, and I think advertisers would understand that. It's just it's advertisers like the, understand one thing. You take the money, you throw it in the air, the money vanishes, and then next month you get another bill. Uh, I, I don't I don't know that advertising works. You know, they uh, the amount of advertising you have to do, uh, you know, it's not like it used to be where there were uh, four TV stations you advertised and everybody said, well, it's on TV. It must be true. It's on radio. It must be true. Uh, it's, it's just not the same. I don't people just aren't tuning into advertising. Well, I, and, I, I'll tell you something, though. Um, 
it, it, so far as advertising goes, I mean, to me, it was always a matter that you you went to to advertisers and said, you know, you're not going to be in a cluster fuck. Uh, and um, the other thing that I saw, and you see this on TV a lot lately, and I don't get it, is you'll see a car commercial for, say, Chevy. Followed by a car commercial for Mercedes Benz. It used to be illegal. In the, in the well, no, it wasn't illegal. It's just advertisers would say, "I ain't buying a spot next to Chevy." Yeah. You know, there's got to be at least a two, uh, a, a five minute break between the two of them. Probably what we don't know now is that Mercedes owns Chevrolet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that they own Chrysler actually. Yeah, don't yeah. they? Well, back to where we came from. Yeah. Where you, where you sponsor a show, you know. <laughs> And I think that's the best way. Because why don't we get back? Casing. Why don't we get back to where we did shows? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Yeah, when I when I was working at my former employer, um, we always discouraged uh, our clients from advertising on the radio uh, for the exact reason that had been said here, uh, like what Rob said. With you know, you've got. 13 or 14 ads, you want to be in the middle of that, and there, the way that you get closer to the front, it costs you more money, but the average person has to hear the ad, I can't remember if it's 7 or 13 times, something like that, yeah. before they actually start remembering it, and, you know, we always told our clients that, you know, it, it, a lot of times it's a waste of money unless it's a special promotion of some sort, but just to advertise your business, um, it's useless unless you guys have a lot of money. Now, we did have clients that did it, mm -hmm. um, but they had buku buck to do it. Right. But some of the smaller ones, we told them, you know, TV and radio advertising does not fit your budget, and uh, you're not going to get the results that you're thinking you're going to get. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Mark, Mark's, Mark's, got, Mark's got his hand up. Mark? I have a question. Do, do radio stations even have their own in-house advertising uh, anymore where they would make their own spots? Sales? Yeah. Yeah. Does that still even exist in this day and age? Yeah. Sure. Uh, I, I, uh, no, I, I don't know anymore if they do. Um, okay. I have friends who do that for a living. Really? At radio stations? Yeah, I mean, they work in clusters now. Because I used my job at a radio station once years ago uh, when I worked at Modesto was I made up what we called spec spots. Hey, here's how your spot would sound on the radio if you right. bought time That's, with yeah. us. Yeah. And and we would create, we would become like little in-house advertising agencies. And exactly. I got And I got very famous for then i went to do the same thing in sacramento i got very famous for coming up with campaigns for people so much so that one of the major advertising agencies wanted to hire me to do creative which i turned down because i said i don't want to work in an ad agency stupid me <laughs> i could have you know i could have been don draper for christ's sake i wish i still had it uh my answering machine uh, uh, you did an uh, outgoing message for me. Did I? Yeah. I don't remember any of this. Yeah. Did I hey, really know you back then? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, 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 did you have something else to say, Mark? No, no, no. I was just, I was just curious because I was always under the impression that if you had a radio station, you had a way to make revenue, ad revenue. Mm -hmm. You know, the rate cards were pretty damn good. I mean, it was spelled out. And now, you know, when I hear how radio stations just aren't doing well, I'm like, well, what's your rate card? You know? And it, it, it's it's like, so you got to try something different, I guess. I mean, I, I was really surprised by this. I'm like, shit. It ain't, well, that's why different. radio's dead. You know, uh, I'll get to you in a second, Patrick, but... Uh, CBS, uh, Moon, Les Moonves, just announced that uh, they, they're selling their radio stations off. Wow, they, really? They see no reason to have them. Yeah. And, oh I, agree, and I agree with them. If I owned, especially AM radio stations right now, I'd get rid of every single one of them. I don't think they're worth a penny. Okay? <laughs> I'd get rid of $5 them. $5 and take one. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's I think never it could be something. It, it, I, I still believe in it. What? I still believe in it. 
I still think that if you if you give people but you still, something uh, a, a reason whoa, to tune in. We're talking about AM radio here. I don't uh -huh. care. AM or FM, it doesn't matter to me. If you give people something to tune into, uh -huh. they will listen. Well, you know something though? I don't know if I agree with you because I think they're so being trained away from that. I see you're getting a whole generation that's growing up right now that doesn't even listen to the radio. Mm -hmm. You know, true. they're listening that's to the true. internet. Where they wind up hearing an Why old codger like is. me doing a radio show, but but it, it, they're, they're listening to the internet, or they they if they want music, they've got it on their iPod for crying out loud. They don't need radio for anything. It needs to reinvent itself again. It, well, what what yeah. can it reinvent? Ow. <laughs> what were you going to say, Jim? Well, no, I. I mean, maybe that's a, a bigger city thing. I would love, I mean, we have, I've told you we have a local radio station here. We also have a community station, but I would love the, the local station to be more local. I would love them to focus more on the town and rather than rather than be, be part of a, a network with some other stations uh, in other parts of the province where you're just, you're just, here in and, and, that, stuff. And, and that's and very nice yeah and, and that's very important for rebel and stoke i mean it's people like yeah. Lila and 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 uh you know guys who are putting packages together in their basement and and you know i would love it if there was if it yeah. was a local local but state. now if you came Should to a city if, if you came to a city like I, new york where you've got something like 40 signals right. and they all decide to right. be local how local can all those stations be you know oh, what I'm so saying? Have have to be I, I mean, I do think localism sure. is very important, and I think these stations that run nothing but syndicated programming are barking up the wrong tree, but also That's they're cheaper. trying to run That's a radio awesome. station cheaply. Yeah. You know, this Long Island radio station, this news talk station on Long Island, it opened. It started about eight or nine months ago. Yeah. They, they're such high visibility. They've got their studios at Long Island MacArthur Airport. Yeah. in like this fishbowl so you can see it yeah 95 percent of the time it's unmanned so what kind of local radio station is it you know what i mean yeah. you gotta get local it's a great idea we need local but you have to put people there it's yeah. true at the grand old opry uh the opera land hotel in nashville there's a radio station and half the time it's unmanned uh, but i had an idea for uh for a radio format uh, news format. Yesterday's news today. You know. You know. <laughs> Can't make, By you the know. way, uh, it, we were talking jokes earlier. Today I was watching Jack Benny shows. Oh, yeah. And the reason I've gotten into watching them lately, if you don't watch, if you if you haven't seen them, and you have some station that plays them, or you have the ability to watch them, the writing is so good, it just overwhelms me at how funny their writers were. And one of the jokes was he's at this uh, at this halfway house trying to get a jacket back he gave to a Goodwill or something like that. And um, this guy comes over and he says, and we have free donuts. And, and so this bum comes over and says, these taste like yesterday's donuts. He says, they are yesterday's donuts. He says, well, do you have some of today's donuts? He says, no, we're getting them in tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just thinking, the writer who wrote that had to just brilliant. be a brilliant, had to be a genius, you know. <laughs> and at one point, it's mentioned that uh, Jack Benny's doctor on one of these shows is a uh, uh, um, uh, 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 is a veterinarian, and he goes and so later on in the show, there's a thing called a callback in comedy, and Benny always uses the callback, and that's when you're referring to another joke, and he and his uh, his announcer Don Wilson breaks his leg, and a doctor is there patching up his leg, and he says, uh, uh, "What's your name?" And he says, "I am doc. I am uh, I'm Doctor Stravinsky," and he says, "Doctor Stravinsky." My do oh, well, did I say before that the um, he he said I have a doctor earlier, and they said it's not he's not really a doctor, he's a veterinarian. So then he see I'm do I'm fucking this thing up. So then he says to this doctor who's patching his legs, my name is Doctor Stravinsky. He says I have a doctor named Doctor Stravinsky. He says, oh yes, that's my doctor, my that's my brother, the veterinarian. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I screwed that up. It was terrible. 
<laughs> but, it's okay. But I, I, I love the humor. Max. Have a great night. I wish I could stay up, but it's 5.30 for me. Oh, yeah. You, are you going to go oh. sleep? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, as they say in, in, I, in thank you, as though. they say in Yiddish, "Gay schlafen." <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. It must be uh, close to whatever it is in German. Guten, uh, guten schlafen. Guten schlafen. Okay. Or guten schlafen. Or yeah. Or ich, ich muss, guten ich muss schlafen. Thank you, Max. Always a pleasure to hear from you. Danke schön. It's a great show, by the way. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. Um, Good night. Yep. Well, we lost Germany, folks. But we took Poland in three days, so, you know. It's, uh, uh, I like what we're doing on the Internet, the way we connect with an audience. So, I don't know, maybe AM radio has to get less. Do this. It just costs money. That's the problem with all this local. You can't have local without putting people to work. So that's why they choose to syndicate, because it's yep, cheap. Yep. But you get nobody to listen because no one wants to hear it. It costs money to do good Broadcast, unless, of course, you. Uh, well, you know, I think the biggest that. lie, the biggest lie in broadcasting today, is that Rush Limbaugh has an audience. Uh, I look around the country, and I look at the ratings from around the country every day. I look at the small markets. I look at the large markets. He's got. He always have Phil. In, in none. Of, in none of those markets. I've never in in the Los Angeles market, Rush Limbaugh's station is number thirty-eight in the market. Yeah. Is he on AM? Here in New York, his station, yeah, his station is number 21, I think. Where's his audience? Where's this huge audience that's clamoring for Rush Limbaugh? I think his, his time has know. come. Yeah. I, I don't think his popularity is uh, the same as it was, and it's waning. Uh, and, and people are tired of all the negativity. Uh, you know, I've listened to him a couple of times over the years, and it's been at least over a 15-year <laughs> period. I don't think I've listened to him more than a half a dozen times. And, you know, I come away from those shows just saying to myself, uh, it, this doesn't feel good. Uh, it, it, there's, there's too much uh, rabble and, rousing. And, and he's, he's got the message you want to hear. Uh May, yeah, but I, I just I just don't want to I just don't want to have that feeling. I, I want to come away from listening to a radio feeling good, uh, learning something, uh, not being uh, riled up. I don't know and, why you, know, you listen to us. It's on both then. sides. You know, I, I, oh, yeah. He's too much shtick. Yeah, uh, his shtick is old. You know, yeah. his his excellence in broadcasting, his this that and the other. His shtick is old. Uh, I heard know, I heard something about him the other day. That if true, uh, maybe we you should, you should pay attention to it the next time you listen to Rush Limbaugh. Hmm. Is that he really, in spite of those cochlear implants, can't yeah. hear. And that's why he doesn't take very many phone calls. Because the cochlear implants, or cochlear, I can't remember how they're pronounced, uh, they don't exactly represent sound in your head like the sound really is. It's very uh, tinny and it's very electronic. And so therefore to hear a telephone call is almost impossible. Now that's and, why he needs to switch to Skype. And that's also why if you listen to him now, he shouts a lot. His, his temp, the timbre of his voice is shouting. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people, the uh, uh, what they're saying is, is that he can't really hear what he's doing anymore. Uh, wow. You know, so... Um, now, is it proven that, uh, or proven, or at least well known that 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 deafness was caused by his uh, all his hillbilly heroin and all? No, that no, shit? that had nothing to do with the hillbilly heroin. I heard it was his addiction to the oxycontin. Oh, really, you heard that? Yeah, really, that, I didn't know that. I've never heard anything one way or another. I don't. I don't know any medical. No wonder. To no it wonder my wife appears not to be listening to me. <laughs> that, that 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 stuff will will make you deaf, no question about it. And he was on he self, uh, you know, he said it straight up that he was he was addicted and was taking a ton of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my wife was taking it, but uh, you know, under under the doctor's orders, and yeah. uh, the only thing she turned into was a hillbilly. So you know, uh, it's. Uh, uh, but uh, you you don't listen to any of these programs, do you, Patrick? No. So why do you find us particularly interesting? Or maybe you don't. 
I, I think I've said this before. I enjoy the differing opinions. Um, you know, I, I used to listen to Rush years ago, and like Phil, I, it was just the same stick every day, um, and it's almost like a, a formula that he was using, yeah. which I think is accurate. And for a while, it kept me entertained, but then he wasn't changing it up. And um, I listened to Hannity maybe maybe a half dozen times, and his voice is just grating. Well, what's interesting, um, what's interesting though, Patrick, is, as I said to Phil, these are guys who have a message that you should be receptive to, and I, that, that's why I find it interesting that two people who I consider pretty good right-wingers on this panel don't like these guys. Well, and I mean, for me, I there are plenty of other news sources for me to get my information from, mm -hmm. and um, I don't need, you know, it, it's with Rush, it's entertainment and news, and I can do without the entertainment. Mm -hmm. Just give me the uh, give me the news. I don't think and he gives. News. Well, I don't I think he gives. I don't think he gives news. I mean, you may hear news at the top of the hour. Right, but what I'm, I guess what I mean by new, I shouldn't say that. I mean uh, current topics, current oh, okay. events. Right. Uh, that, that's what I meant by news. Um, but it, it, you know, sprinkled in with humor, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I, I got tired of it. Um, and then you've got Hannity that, I don't know, uh, Glenn Beck, he's another one. Um, who, who, was the, who was the guy that was Nixon's uh, 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 Watergate guy that went to jail? G. Gordon and Liddy. G. Gordon Liddy. He had yeah, a program G. that I used yeah. to listen do you know to how years he, ago. Do you know how he got? Think, you know how he got his program? Nah. Because I turned the slot right. down. You turned the what? I turned the slot down. It was oh, at, really? It was at a radio oh. station in uh, Washington D.C. WJFK. Yeah. And uh, I was supposed to, uh, I was going to quit San Francisco and go to work for WJFK, which was being run by Mel Carmazan. And uh, they were going to syndicate me and everything. And oh. I just, I felt big guilt complexes about quitting my contract in San Francisco. So I didn't go. Um, and um, I also, because I had heard terrible things about Mel Carmazan. And then in later years, I went to work for Mel Carmazan and found out what a great guy he was and what a terrific guy he was towards talent. And to this day, I kick myself in the ass for not taking that do job at WJFK. But, yeah. the f but the fact was that because I turned it down, they went and got G. Gordon Liddy. Now, I don't know how you <laughs> go from wanting me to hiring G. Gordon Liddy because that's a real leap in faith, but they well, did. Well, maybe they told G. Gordon Liddy, if you don't take the job, we'll hire Alex Bennett. If It may be something like that. <laughs> uh, but uh, I used to listen to him. I don't think I, he's in my market anymore. Uh, and, this, and it's been many, many years. But I do have an autographed photo of him in my office. <laughs> and uh, You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Why am I not at all surprised about that? <laughs> See, and, and then I used to like, before he started trying to sell websites, uh, uh, Michael Reagan, uh, Reagan uh, uh, President Reagan's stepson. Oh. Uh, I, I enjoyed him years ago, but uh, his shtick has changed. His shtick has changed? That guy's always been an idiot. Either of you guys like Michael oh. Savage? Oh my um, God! I, I have not really. I have uh, I have come in contact with Michael Savage, and I want to tell you, if you think he's crazy on the air in real life, he's really crazy. He well, his real name, here. in his real name, Michael Weiner. So yeah, he tries yeah. to act like a savage, but really he's just no, a no. But I mean, it, but he <laughs> it, he is um, he's um, he's crazy. He's nuts. He's, He's literally uh, an herbologist or something. He, uh, he he writes books about herbs and herbal cures. I don't know. But you see, all these guys, it's all the same thing. There's nothing new. Nobody's bringing anything. New. I, I read uh, Talkers Magazine, and, and they say, oh, and so-and-so just hired so-and-so to do such-and-such. And I go, more of the same. 
Mm-hmm. No, nope, everybody's afraid to do something different. I mean, I, I've tried to pedal this thing around. Nobody can understand what we're doing here. They don't understand that at least it's a different sound for talk radio. You know, and, and I, it, people, it how people from really the, like it, but they're so afraid of any risk to take. Well, and I think this suffers from the 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 problem with uh, with radio is that you. It's very hard to do. You'd have to sell this with all the frequent breaks in it. I I was talking with a good friend of mine who was one of the biggest consultants in the broadcasting business at one time, and he gave me the way to handle that. I worried about that too. And well, well I said that it, you know that the horrible thing about this format is, can you imagine us? And we're all talking and talking about stuff and batting stuff around and telling Doug to shut up. And uh, all of a sudden, I got to go, oh, wait, wait a minute. Hold on, guys. We got to take out some time for some words from our sponsor. We'll be right back. And then all of us sit around here with our finger up our ass for seven minutes. And by the time we come back, whatever momentum we've created They're will have been gone. Right. And that I just don't know if this format could be done on radio. And he said to me, he said, of course you can. What you do is you do what the way you're doing it right now. And you guys just keep talking. And the radio audience leaves you and comes back. You don't stop. Hmm. So they're coming back to the conversation. And then maybe a minute in or so you can refresh it or whatever. But that you, we, you know, we would just do a show like we do here for two hours now, talking to each other. And that every now and then they would break for commercials. And then but you that's come back. a lot of missed content if you've got yeah. seven minutes. It, well, so the question it, would it be. It's like 20 it, minutes it, per hour he, of. Uh, he, I think his argument on that was that it, people aren't going to be listening to us for the content, but for the company. You what know, if the show wasn't live? It, what? What if it wasn't live? But it if, does, if it was pre-recorded. Wow. It, 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 well, uh, we got to get the audience to call in, though. No, but we but we'd want to do it live. Yeah, we'd want people to call in. But yeah. the, the point is that that's not the worst idea in the world because I, I had even thought of it at one point and then kind of discounted it because I wasn't able to coalesce it. And he said, "You just uh, you know, you just uh, do you, a bunch of people." Do you want to, Alex? Do you want to experiment and stick some uh, some commercials in, and then uh, listen to what the show sounds like uh, when when you do that? Well, Jim's got his first. I've got to get the seven you. minutes worth of commercials, <laughs> and I'm sorry, Steel. I can't do wall to wall ads for a rug company. So you know, I mean, um, it. Uh, but it, it, it's an interesting thing about how how do we how do I sell it? You know. Here's another question I would have. Yeah. Say yeah. you you do wind up with you know and you you get on in a in a in a fairly good sized market. You've got a good signal, a good I don't know AM or FM signal. Yeah. Now yeah. you're limited to ten people, or maybe you wouldn't care. But how do you control? I mean, you're not going to have the, the the universe is going to be a lot larger. So once you've come on the air, say you're going to do a, a, a two or a four hour slot. Are you going to turn over the callers? Do you say yeah. we'll, we'll use yeah, callers yeah, for an hour and then at the next hour you start again and the next hour you start again, even though it's the same host? Well, you know, you say, uh, well, thank uh, you for calling us. Next hour we'll start again. Another panel. Uh, I think you're thinking maybe in conventional terms. I think having the same panel on and some people hang up and other people come in. We've had that happen tonight. Uh, is probably the way to run it. See, I think that all of you individually have kind of become stars in your own in your own right. You know, our audience listens to us. The major the majority of the people who listen to this the, this program are do not call it okay, mm-hmm. and um, but they but they do know who Mark is and they do know who uh, 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 Dan is and they do know who Phil is and they certainly know who. <laughs> Who uh, Doug, uh, 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 Doug is and Patrick and <laughs> Rob because Rob has a show and Charlie. I mean, uh, the 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 uh, the callers have actually kind of become little mini personalities in all their own, and maybe well, that's the value that, also of the show too. I mean, well, but, you know, this how this goes back to remember when David was and and I think maybe David and some others would criticize me saying that. I was like a co-host of the show, 
but it's like that's a little bit and maybe I did it too much of how I sort of look at it because you know I kind of I always kind of like radio and the limited capacity I did it but you know this is you know we're more than callers we have more responsibility than just your average caller to a talk show we're part of what keeps it all going well I mean it, it it's a we it, like it yeah. you know what it is uh-huh. I, I came up with an idea it's like throwing something on the wall and then letting it see what happens with it, you know? Mm. And, and we're slowly discovering what the strengths are. And, and in a lot of cases, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an old guy. I come from old-time radio. I was just listening to uh, some stuff I'm probably going to recycle for the air of shows I did years ago, uh, 45 years ago at WMCA in New York. Really? And uh, I love to hear that stuff. Well, I mean, you know, I got one show with Eric Clapton, where he's pl- oh, there where we he's, go. Where he's playing Man. live, live yeah. in the studio. And I just what I did is I just got a new uh, uh, cassette machine here. I can if it, it's show and tell tonight, but I can't bring it up that high here. I'll show it this way. And all this thing does, I plug it into a USB port. It's an ion, put a tape in there, and uh, use a program that they send with it. And it makes it into an MP3. Oh wow! And so I'm converting these things because who knows how much longer the cassettes are going to last. I have one right behind me—a cassette, a dual cassette deck that uh, it's an ion. That yeah. Plug in that uh, machine behind so me. So you know there. what I'm talking about? You know how much this little thing costs? Like twenty-one dollars. Wow. It's, it's, you know. So do you still hmm? do you still have that uh, machine you had in New York that uh, played? Um, uh, cartoons. You, you you had these old cartoons on a reel to reel. It was flat. It was sitting on a on a on a. Uh, you had it on a sort of a plank, and uh, in your living room, and it and. Well, that was, was that was playing. just a, that was just an old reel to reel video recorder. Oh, and uh, you were playing cartoons from like the thirties. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, because I had a reel of that. But I uh, no, I. Uh, the, the plank I had there, I used to uh, have an editing machine there and a regular machine, and I would sit there on my knees, literally, editing videotape for hours and hours at a time. You'd think, I, you'd it? think I've been handing out blowjobs to look at my knees, <laughs> you know. Uh, Were you physically cutting the videotape back in those days? No, no, no. You would you would go from what you would you would start them both seven seconds beforehand. You would you would cue them up to seven seconds before you wanted to have it come in i can't tell you how we did it we did it by it it, it was not easy okay but then you would start both machines at the same time and when you wanted to make the edit you push record and it would cut in because the machine you were using the editing machine allowed you to do that without any loss of sync wow so that was the way i first edited uh uh, TV shows in the old days for cool. for, for public access, uh, but uh, it, it was like it was. It was I, I often considered that my baptism by fire because that was a really strenuous way to have to create. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like I almost felt like you know Van Gogh being out in the out in the fields and having crows attacking him. You know, <laughs> and that 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 was my art coming to coming into play. Uh, I had never seen anything like that before. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was one of the first people to have them. I also had a, uh, had a portable machine as well. I had a portable machine that weighed twenty pounds, twenty five pounds, and a Maybe camera. That was the one I saw. A camera with a cable going uh-huh. to the machine. What and was the format? What format of tape? It was uh, was half inch. Like reel to reel, half Re- inch reel to reel, half inch. Yeah. I've never seen that. You never have. No, wow. nothing that old. No. I think I have one you can buy. Uh, <laughs> I, I have tapes that won't even work. Because, number one, if you could find the machines, they've lost their lubrication. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. We all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 I the dad every once in a while during the show. Well, uh, Jim knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> you remember the old reel-to-reels, don't you? Yeah. The real yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. 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 I start, it was two-inch. Yeah. When I started in television, it was two-inch tape. Oh, I got to tell you a great story. Okay, about two inch tape. Two inch tape, literally, if you can imagine two inch tape, it was that wide. Am I, mm-hmm. am I, since it's video night, 
You can go watch the tape to see. And it was on these big, heavy reels. I think each one must have weighed... 15 pounds? 15 pounds full of tape, okay? So I did a show in Houston, Texas. I did a, 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 a music show where we played music clips, and we had music people in the play and so on. And I had them record me. I said, would you just record one of these shows and let me have a copy? So they did the show... And uh, who did we lose? Did we lose just Tony. 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 Oh, we lost Tony. <laughs> Didn't say goodbye. Um, well, at least he explained himself he earlier. Explained so. himself earlier. So and yeah. I, I explain myself real quick. I have to go too, but I'll keep listening. Oh, okay. Jim's got to go do, get ready to do a show. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bye, 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 Jim. Bye. Okay. Good night. Okay. 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 Yeah, that, when you hear that, <clears throat> that's uh, no. But anyway, so I said, would you make me a copy? Would you make me a copy of the show? And they said, uh, sure. And they made a copy of the show while it was going, and they recorded it. And uh, they handed me the tape. <laughs> now, here's this big canister. I'm sw I swear to you, yep. it was like this, okay? Uh -huh. And it weighed 15, 20 pounds. Is that yeah. the kind of canister that had the straps? Uh, it had a handle, actually. Ooh, plastic on it. Yeah. plastic yeah, it with, a, a, with a thing in the center that you turn to lock it. Uh, it had the big hub. Like, yeah, the and then hub. you you would put it down on something, and then you'd have to screw the hub in, yep. Yep. so that it didn't wobble off. And uh, I dragged that thing around the country to everywhere I moved for the better part of I think, let's see, I did that show in the what was it sixty five, and I didn't get back to San Francisco till um, oh god, when did I get back to San Francisco? Mid about 80s, right? 70s, uh, 79, I think. 79, yeah. So about 20 years, I dragged this tape all around the country. Wherever I moved to, the tape had to come, right? <laughs> right. And I dragged it around the country uh, for, for 20 years of my life. And finally, I wind up doing a show at, uh, at uh, 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 a station in, in San Francisco. And uh, I'm, I'm walking through the studio one day, and I, I look over in the engineering room, and what to my wondering eye should appear but a two-inch <laughs> reel-to-reel machine, because most stations kept at least one, so in case some idiot came in with a two-inch reel of tape, because now they were down to one inch, okay? Yeah. okay. If somebody came in with a two-inch tape, they could, they could somehow use it. And I said... Hey, listen, I got a two-inch reel of tape at home. Is there any way you can, like, uh, make this over, like, to VHS or whatever so that I can see it and it's more manageable and whatever? And they said, sure, bring it in. We'll be happy to do it for you. So I, I go home. I grab this thing. I lug it in. You know, my arm is falling off from bringing it. They throw it on the machine. I'm... In suspense, I haven't seen what I look like on television for 20 years, right? And it was somebody else's show. Oh, <laughs> wow. It was well, like some other dance party show done by a guy by the name of uh, Larry, Larry, what was his name? Larry somebody in, in Houston. It was somebody else's show. So that's my story about two-inch tape. And do you know, it was still a couple of years that I didn't throw that thing away because I, I just didn't have the heart to after carrying it around that long. It was like a child. You didn't want to abandon it. But when I first started in television, my very, I just got left radio. My very first job in TV was in a video dub house mm -hmm. in New York City. Yeah. And we, you know, this was 1983. They were still very, very much using two-inch tape because not only did we dub that stuff, but we were also housing a lot of videotape for different television shows like Three's Company and the big one that was always two inches. Just oh, I used to curse because I used to have to pull them from the shelves and send them out was Benny Hill. The Benny Hill show was all two inches. Yeah. Uh, Those two-inch so, yeah. reels were murder. Yes, Mark. Oh, I, same thing. My my first job in post was for MTI, um, 
and I remember those two inch Ampex monsters. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell, pneumatics? You know, I was like, wow. What, what, I, I was I, like, I'm telling people, these things were so <laughs> big and bulky, you could have used them as wheels on cars. Yeah, they were wow. huge. You know, I, I, as a kid, drove. I went to the N NBC studios in New York, the radio studios, and they sh and they used to use that t that tape. Uh, they'd crumple it up, and that was one of the sound effects they used to make the sound of bacon uh, uh, cooking by by Remember taking that? the tape oh, and, wow. and and crumpling it. That's right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was well, I was pretty actually, young. The way you did, uh, the way that, it that did fire was it, it fires you used to use uh, what's it the uh, uh, you know. Uh, transparent uh, p uh, cellophane. Tape. Cellophane. You would yeah. take some cellophane, just crinkle it. It would sound like uh, fire, you know. Um, but um, that was my biggest disappointment, by the way, when when I was a kid. Um, there was a show on radio called Let's Pretend, mm. and and every every Saturday they would do a fairy tale, right? And for some reason. And I remember the theme song. It was sponsored by Cream of Wheat, and the this, this theme song went, Cream of Wheat is so good to eat, and we'll have it every day. And then they, Cream of Wheat presents Let's Pretend. And then they would do like you know, Hansel and Gretel or whatever. So we came to New York to see my grandmother and my grandfather, and I guess I'm, God, I had to be like just 10 years old or something, maybe a little younger than that. And my mother, as a big treat for me, got me tickets to go to NBC to see them do Let's Pretend on radio. Cool. And, and I went there, and here were these people. There weren't any fairies. There weren't any kings or queens or princesses. There were these people in suits sitting around microphones talking. And it just... I could never listen to the radio show again because it so disappointed me that, you know, the least they could have done because they knew the audience they were going to get were going to be kids. It was dress up in the costumes. But they didn't even do that. They just stood around with a guy doing sound effects over on the side, and none of it made sense to me. I couldn't follow it. And that was, my, that was actually my first real entree to the radio business. Wow. And, and it so disappointed me. What year was that? God, 47, 48, maybe. So they were still maybe. doing serials on, on radio oh, in 47? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For me, it might have been 59 well, or 60. Well, I grew up on radio, you know, uh, and then television came along. It came to our house in 52, I think. Yeah. Something like that. I was 12 years old when television came along. You were an early adapter. Uh, 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 pretty early, yeah. 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 I remember when we got the set and... Uh, uh, they didn't go on. KRON TV went on before anybody else, and they didn't go on till f uh, five o'clock in the afternoon when Howdy yeah. Doody went on. That was the first show that was on the air. And prior to that, they would run a test pattern. But we would turn on the TV the set and sit there watching the damn test pattern because it was television. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. Mark, that um, that I, I have to thank you because you turned me on to that eye of. Um, that, that yes. what's the name I of that the generation isn't that, a, isn't that amazing wait what's this on facebook there's a i guess a, a page or a group called i have a generation uh -huh. and they have some of the most vintage i mean <gasps> pictures of of old time television they have even old like, like they they just ran last week a 2 hour special of Jerry Lewis from 1989 Telethon, where it's all backstage, it's all his rehearsals and 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 his his recording with Frank Sinatra, how they were joking around before they started recording. It's just fascinating. Every the morning, there's something else that I want to see. What's the name of the Facebook page? I Eyes on of a Generation. Eyes of a Generation. Eyes of a Generation. You got to yeah. check it out. It's well, fabulous. Alex, Alex. But I, start, I started out by listening to radio, and so therefore radio to me has always been a visual medium, you know, it, and, and I've always treated it as a visual medium because that's, that's, that's what I was used to. I was used to listening to Jack Benny and imagining, you know, his Maxwell car where the, where the sound effect was done by Mel Blanc, you know, and, and uh, to me radio entertained and radio 
um, did did shows. And, and you know, you were always capable of doing that. You had guests and did things on radio that just came across visually, uh, even though uh, you know you would say that some of these things weren't fit for radio, but you made them fit. Well, I always argued that radio was the most visual medium we have because you throw some kind of sound out there and then people use their imagination to make the pictures. And... Um, that's why I love Jim, and that's why I've always been a yeah. big supporter of Jim's, and that's why I've loved what he's done. Uh, God, we've known each other uh, what it's going on almost twenty years now, uh, and and uh, what I love about it, especially like the Adventure Nights, is it reminds yeah. me of the old radio I used to love because you know we can take Patrick uh, into a a spelunking. You know, yeah. and and have him or come down in a balloon in his wheelchair. Get shit because on there's nobody to tell you on radio. Yeah, there's nobody to tell you on radio that that isn't actually really happening. Yeah. <laughs> and, and 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 so that's why I think a Jim is so valuable. I mean, I think he's the most unique thing I've heard. In, in uh, I'm jealous of him. You know, this show's a piece of cock cock yeah, compared to what he does. You know, the shows are amazing. They really are. Yeah. Yeah. Just, these, uh, see something else. You, you I, really. I, uh, and you, you guys, Patrick and Miranda. You gave us a gift of, 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 yeah. of him. What were you going to say, guys, Rob? You guys with him on Wednesday night are just. Fa and Mark, too, when you're on. It's how do you do it? How do you even. I sit there and I wonder how I, it is I that. Was, I, I'm convinced I was born later in a later generation. I love radio i love old time radio but you know what's great about you guys with with him on adventure night is all of a sudden you become actors exactly yes. and yeah. you're very and you're very good actors you play along yep. with it nobody ever breaks the the the, the visual sense of what's going on the you know one, the one good thing about if i could say alex the one good thing about the internet was that all of a sudden all these old radio shows appeared and i'm not talking dozens i'm talking thousands and it was like oh my god yes please you know you'd have to go to old-time radio conventions to tape trade you know cassette tape trade uh, All I, of a sudden, I, I gotta tell you years ago i lost a lot of interviews that i've done over the years just don't keep them in those days you didn't keep them because they all had to be on reel to reel and that took up a lot of space now you can make a file and put them on a on a uh, on, a, on a, a portable hard drive that uh, can probably could have handled all the stuff I ever did say at uh, at, at uh, uh, Sirius, um, but the fact is, I, there's stuff that I lost. I go on the internet now. I've got me as James Bond in Houston, Texas. I've got the interview I did with the Grateful Dead. They're all out there. My whole life is coming back to me courtesy of people who have saved this stuff and somehow found a second life for it on the Internet. Airdrops. Two minutes. Yeah, yeah. two minutes. Uh, your clock's wrong. I got a minute and 15 seconds. Oh, I, I, don't, have a, I don't have a second thing. Oh, well, they, they, they have those now on clocks. You might be interested in getting yourself one. Interesting. I just look at the top uh, of the monitor. Well, if you want me uh, to Patrick's play a got... theme song, then I'll play a theme song. But... Uh, yeah, I just I just I'm hope. Sure. That, I wish you can we could I wish you could make a deal with someone like Lee Presson just to get custom music. To get custom oh. music, yeah. I, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, Lee, well, if you're listening, I'm sorry, but boy, I'd love to hear you make music for Alex. But. <laughs> hey, Wishful thinking. Thanks everybody for being here. We had Patrick, of course. Mike, I'm sorry you didn't get in tonight. Doug, yeah. Uh, Dan, Jim, Mark. Tony, Phil, Max, Rob, Charlie, and Michael Heinen tried to call in, and we had to turn him away because we had too many people. Uh, hey, we're, I, we got the weekend off, so I'll see you guys on Monday, okay? Thanks. I, I appreciate it. And, and everybody, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. And as always, we'll see you on Monday. As always, uh, 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 Rebel Stoke Jim is next over the, most of the same station. And in the meantime... As always, if you see her, tell her I love her.
Okay, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it uh, from everybody. It was really yeah. wonderful hearing from it's you. Great. Yeah. Have a great weekend. It was a nice, easy going show. And now yeah. let me turn off the TV.